Hosea said when he went down, as Ronnie said, uh, Gomer found her, she ended up in bondage. And this preacher was writing and he told, he said, can't you imagine when Hosea went down to, maybe he said back then they would go to slave markets like they do livestock markets today. He said, uh, can't you imagine when Hosea, you know, was probably like farmers are today. Farmers will get together and they'll go to market. And uh, don't you imagine that they may, uh, Hosea might have went to the market that day with, with uh, a couple of his buddies. They was looking over the slaves and see which one they wanted and which one they wanted to buy. And maybe Hosea looked at, looked at uh, one of his buddies he, or one of his buddies looked at him and said, you got him picked out yet? And he said, yeah, I want that right there. And uh, he said, one of his buddies probably said, you mean you're going to waste your money or what money you got and, and what you're going to trade for her? Yeah, look at her. She's washed up. Look, she looks like she couldn't carry a bucket of water. She couldn't do nothing. Be good to carry her own weight around. But he saw something in her. He knew that he loved her. Thank God forever. And don't you imagine when when uh, Hosea told the slave owner, he said, I want that right there. He probably looked at him and he thought, man, are you crazy? All these others around here and you're going to pick that one? Thank God forever. That's the same way when the devil looked at the Lord when he redeemed. Why? Listen, they'll despite you. They'll despite you. They'll turn on you. He said, yeah, but I love them. I love them. Thank God forever. He looks at us in a way that we don't look at ourselves. Somebody said one time, they said we need to replace our windows with mirrors. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We can look out the window, and, and I don't know about you, but the biggest enemy we got in our house down there, to me, is a mirror. Yeah. Buddy, I, to me, right now, I don't look very old at all. <laughs> Pretty trim, you know, ain't got no belly problems or nothing like that. Got a full head of hair. But I get in front of that mirror, it's a different story. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Brother Ronnie was talking about Paul the board. Paul the board told another story. Paul said this old uh, boy and girl got married and a girl she didn't know a whole lot. Hadn't been been raised up in the mountains. And, and buddy, they were so poor they didn't even have a mirror. But they moved into the boy's uh, grandparents' house, and they had taken all the stuff out of the grandparents' house and put up in the attic. And old boy got in the attic about every day. He'd go up there messing around, looking through the stuff, and, and uh, so finally his, his little woman decided she, uh, her, her husband was at work one day. She said, "I'm going up there in the attic, look around, see why he's going up there." And uh, so she she went up there in the attic and started digging around. And she had never seen a mirror before. And she found a mirror and she got that mirror and she looked at it. Boy, she got madder to wet him. He, she said, Dad, boy. She said, now I know what he's been up to. Said, he's been coming up here looking at this old hag. <laughs> said, I'll get him. That's the same way we are sometimes. Listen to me. We'll look at the faults of others, but we don't see the fault of our own. Jesus Christ can see our faults, and He still loves. Brother Roger was telling one time about this man. Said he was he was in the army. Said they came for inspection time. And said the 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 high colonel was coming to inspect the company, and said they were standing. They were standing in attention like the soldiers do. Lee, I know that you've been inspected before in the military. Said that colonel come down through there and he looked at each one of them. Said there's a young man standing there and didn't have his, his uh, shirt pocket button. Said that colonel walked up, looked him straight eye, and he said, he said, Private, button that shirt. That old private looked at that colonel, said, you want me to do it right now? He said, yes, I want you to do it right now. He reached out and buttoned that colonel's button. <laughs> Come on. It's the way we are. God Almighty still loves us. Still cares about us. Still calls us His own. 
We can be in the depths of sin. Far cry from Him. But He still looks at us and calls us His own. And He loves us enough that He had paid the, the most, the greatest price that could Amen. ever be paid. You think of that. You as moms and dads, as grandparents, look at your children. And you say, I ain't no way. They ain't no way. Could I give one of mine for somebody that was worthless? But Jesus Christ <coughs> was a supreme sacrifice for our sins and He loves us. He went to the farthest part. Zach, I'd like for you to sing, I've come to take you home. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I know what's going through your mind that the Lord's speaking to you. You say, why me, Lord? Why me? Why me? I can see Gomer right now. Gomer probably thought, and I looked at the Lord when the Lord was dealing with me. I've told this so many times. I thought, man, the Lord's wanting to whoop me and the Lord's wanting to kill me. And I get so upset. I was visiting in a home this week and uh, uh, the man was talking about uh, uh, how the, that, that he felt like that, that he would, the, all the problems that he was having was because of the wrong that he had done. And I said, that, that's not the way God works. God's not concerned about our past. All he's concerned about is about our future. And don't you imagine after Jose had paid the price for Gomer, he went over and he took Gomer by the hand. She said, uh, could I have a word with you? I'm just supposing, Terry. <coughs> Jose, I'm going to say, what is it, Gomer? <coughs> said, did you by me just take me home and beat me up for all the wrong that I've done to you and for my betrayal to you? Is that what you bought me for? If it is, please have a little bit of mercy on me. Leave me here. Hosea looked at Gomer and he said, No. I just come to take you home. Yeah. Zach, that's why the Lord came. He just come to take us home. Hey. He, didn't, he didn't call us. He didn't redeem us. Just so that he could have some fun with us for all of our wrong and chastise us. But he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Hey. Father, we come before you this morning and we praise you for all that you've done. Thankful, Lord, for how that you've blessed us. Thankful, Lord, for how good that you've been. We thankful, Lord, that you come and you give all you have. You give all you have to redeem us. You paid the supreme sacrifice and you made the supreme sacrifice. Now, Lord, help us to remember. Help us to remember it's nothing good that we've done. We have what we have because we've been redeemed. We've been bought with the price and mercy and grace was bestowed upon us. Heavenly Father, if there's someone under the sound of my voice today that don't know you in the pardon and forgiveness of sin, help them to see that they'll never get their self ready or get their self good enough to deserve redemption. But Lord, help them to see that they they got to come as they are. Got to come as they are. I know that Gomer was embarrassed for Hosea to look upon her. But Hosea, Hosea didn't look at Gomer with his eyes. He looked at her with his heart. And he loved her. Father, you love us. And we're so thankful for it. Help us to love you. Move as only you can. It's in your name we pray. Amen.